Hey, Joel Klatt here, and it's time for college football. I can't wait. You can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm going to do something that I despise. Do a preseason top 25. Here we go. Number 25, the Army Black Knights. I love Army. This is a team that in back-to-back -back seasons have won 10 plus games. Think about this now. They've never done that in the history of their program, and now they get their quarterback back. They've won 10 plus in two straight seasons, and in week two, they're gonna be on Fox, big noon Saturday. Gus and I will be there at the big house as they face Michigan. Love what Army's doing. They're at 25. At number 24, I'm gonna go with Northwestern. I toyed around with putting Northwestern a little higher than that, but I'm gonna keep them where they're at because they're replacing a quarterback, Clayton Thorson, that played a lot of games. I know it's with Hunter Johnson. Lots of defensive players back. Look at that side of the ball as something that they'll lean on. At number 23, I like Stanford. KJ Costello is an underrated quarterback, and particularly when you're talking about going forward to the NFL. They've got one of the best players in the entire country on their offensive line and Walker Little. This is a guy that probably is gonna be a top 10 or 15 pick in the NFL draft. I'm worried a little bit about their schedule. Think about this in the non-conference. They faced three non-conference opponents that totaled 33 wins just last year. Notre Dame, Northwestern, and UCF. So a tough road ahead for Stanford. At number 22, I'm gonna go with Iowa. Some people have them higher than that because their quarterback is back, Nate Stanley. I'm a big fan of Nate Stanley. I also love AJ Epinesa, one of the best players in the entire Big Ten Conference. Here's the problem. Their road schedule is brutal. They've got to go to Iowa State. They've got to go to Michigan, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and they've got four teams, including the Cyclones, off a bye. That's a rough schedule for the Hawkeyes, so I've got them at number 22. At number 21, Mississippi State. I'm a fan of Joe Moorhead. You should know that going back to the Penn State days, so I've got them in the top 25 at 21. Auburn. At 20, Gus Malzahn taking over play calling duties. They got all five offensive linemen back. Who's the quarterback? We'll see, I guess. Malzahn on the hot seat, gonna have to have a big year there. Number 19, how's this? Those Cyclones, Iowa State. I think Iowa State is on this path, this trajectory, eight wins in back-to-back -back seasons. Matt Campbell, I call Matt Campbell a top five, six coach in all of college football. When you really break it down, I think you can easily put him in the top 10. I think you can get him into the top six with what he's done at Iowa State. So Iowa State with their quarterback back with Brock Purdy and a great defense. Watch out for the Cyclones in the Big 12. Miami at number 18. How about that news? Jaron Williams is going to be their starting quarterback. Um, Tate Martell did not work out. Not mad at you. I think you should stay at Miami. You don't need to transfer out. All you got to do is get your degree and then you can leave the right way and you can try to find a place to play later in your career. I understand it hasn't worked out for you, but Tate Martell, we know that you're a decent player. Hopefully you can get on the field some other time. Jaron Williams leads the Canes this year. Washington at 17. I know what people are going to say like, Washington's better than that. Yeah, I know. But here's three things that I have a problem with with Washington. And I don't want to just be all negative. but. You're losing your all-time leading passer in Jake Browning. I know you weren't happy with him, but he was your all-time leading passer. You're losing your all-time leading rusher in Miles Gaskin. That's tough to overcome as well. Now you start looking at who have they actually beat that they weren't supposed to beat under Chris Peterson. They don't play well when they're the underdog. I need to see that Boise State-esque win from Peterson at Washington. That's why I've got them down where I have them is because I don't think that they're going to beat Oregon this year because Oregon's a better team. Number 16, I'm going to go with TCU. Um, really one main fact, Gary Patterson, after a disappointing season, is lights out. Think about it. A few years ago, they went 4-8. and What'd they do the next year? 12-1. and 6-7 and seven, a couple of years later, what'd they do the very next year? 11-3. and three. So last year, they only scored 23 points per game. They have that rash of injuries. I think TCU bounces back because I think Gary Patterson is one of the best coaches in the country. At number 15, here's where you get into the nitty gritty here of teams that you really think can start competing for conference championships and maybe if things go right, a potential playoff berth. And we start that conversation with Oregon. Oregon's gonna be a 15. You're gonna see them in some people's top 10. I'm not gonna buy it just yet, not just yet. And part of the reason is that Herbert hasn't played great against really good defenses. Now, another thing that alarms me about Herbert is that his efficiency rating and his completion percentage has gone down. Down, that's right, last year from the year before. 
That's not what you want to see out of one of the best players in the country. But remember, this is a great offensive line, and I do like what Chris Ball has done as far as the recruiting goes up in Oregon. So I think Oregon's going to be a top 15 team, probably play for the Pac-12 championship. Texas A&M at 14. I would put them higher than 14 because I think their team is really good, and I believe in Jimbo Fisher, but my goodness, that schedule. I mean, the schedule is brutal. They're going to play Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, and LSU. All of those teams will be in the future in my top 10. Nebraska at 13. Schedule, schedule, schedule. I love Adrian Martinez. I love Scott Frost. You talked about them last year at length, but their schedule is tremendous. They miss Michigan, Michigan State, and Penn State out of the other division. They get Ohio State at home, and then they got home games against Northwestern, Wisconsin, and Iowa. They're going to win a lot of football games. Michigan State at number 12. To get their quarterback back, basically their entire defense back, they're going to have a bounce back season. This is a team that led the nation in rush defense a year ago, and I think that they're going to have a good year. Florida is my number 11 team. They finished with three straight big wins. I know it weren't great opponents outside of that Michigan game, and remember Michigan didn't have their entire roster. Some guys were sitting out that bowl game, but three straight wins to finish the season by 25 points or more. Now let's get into the top 10. Utah, number 10 with Kyle Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham has said this offseason that this defensive front seven might be his best ever. Pay heed to that comment. He's had some amazing defenses, and when he has those defenses, what do they do? They play great football. They're going to get Zach Moss back. Maybe Tyler Huntley at quarterback plays a little better than he did last year, and he could stay healthy for the season. Watch out for Utah. They're my Pac-12 champion. LSU at number nine. I like LSU a lot, maybe higher than some folks on LSU. They've recruited amazing. Grant Delpit might be one of the best players in the entire country. Joe Burrow is back. He cut down on the turnovers in the tail end of the season. I think this is the type of guy that can go out there and have a really good year. At Texas, at Alabama, that's a tough road. Texas rated higher than LSU. Eight, Notre Dame. Ian Book last year made a huge difference. Once he was inserted into the offensive lineup at quarterback, they averaged well over 30 points and made that run to the playoff. I'm not one of those guys who's gonna hate on Notre Dame because they went to the playoff and got beat by an unbelievable Clemson team. Remember, Clemson beat Bama by 28. 28, they only beat Notre Dame by 27. Read from that what you will. Number seven is Ohio State. Ohio State has to replace Urban Meyer. They have to replace their defensive coordinator, Greg Schiano. They have to replace a first-round quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. They also have to replace Bosa, who I know wasn't there for the entirety of the season last year, but those are a lot of people to replace. I think Ryan Day is tremendous. I think Justin Fields is tremendous. It's hard for me to put him higher than seven right now. Talented team that I think can do a lot of things, but they're not in my top six. Top six, Texas. Sam Ellinger is one of my favorite players. Why? Because he oozes college football. I put, I'm going to put him out there as one of the best players in the Big 12. You've seen on Twitter I did that. The best player in the Big 12. Sam Ellinger is so important to Texas because of what he does not turning the ball over, what he does in short yardage rushing, what he does just from a human standpoint. Think of what Tim Tebow did for Florida. That's what Sam does for Texas. I think Texas is going to have a great year. Michigan at number five. That's right, ahead of Ohio State. Michigan ahead of Ohio State. I'm even having trouble with that because, yes, I know 0-7 against Urban Meyer. Jim Harbaugh has not beaten Ohio State. Jim Harbaugh has not been good against the top 10, but they bring Josh Gaddis in as their offensive coordinator. Maybe now they'll be able to throw the football when they have to throw the football. Here's the thing about Michigan. They've been really good ground and pound. If they're better than you, they're probably going to beat you. But when you're more talented than them, or you get up on them, they've had an inability to throw the ball when you take away their run game. Maybe now with Gaddis, those three great wide receivers led by Donovan Peoples-Jones and Nico Collins, Tariq Black, and their quarterback back in Shea Patterson, maybe now they'll be able to throw the ball when they're behind. Don Brown, don't worry about his defense. He's going to be just fine. Oklahoma is at number four. Think about this. Lincoln Riley has lost four football games. Their offense has averaged 39 points a game in the four losses. Hey, Alex Grinch, welcome to Norman. New defensive coordinator, Alex Grinch. All you got to do is be average, man. They were the worst pass defense in the country last year. In the country. Think about it. All they've got to do is be in the top 60, and they're probably going to 
compete for a playoff win? Maybe win a national championship? Who knows? Jalen Hurts, excited to see you play down there. That'll be an interesting one with him at quarterback following the two Heisman Trophy winners, Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield. Baker Baker, shout out to you. Uh, number three, Georgia. I like Georgia a lot. Think about what Georgia has done in the last couple of years. They took Alabama to overtime in the national championship game. They had a seven point lead in the fourth quarter against Alabama in the SEC championship game last year. Their really only flaw was that they laid an egg against LSU in a game in which Jake Fromm played his worst game of the season. Outside of that, they were probably a playoff team last year. I know Texas handled them in the bowl game and I'm not one to give SEC apologies out there, but it was a meaningless bowl game. It was. Texas, great win. Not a lot to play there for Georgia. I love Jake Fromm, uh, also DeAndre Swift. Elite players, elite players. Top two in the country. All right, this is like the no-brainer of all no-brainers, Clemson and Alabama. You're gonna be my top two teams in the country. A lot of people are gonna put Alabama at number one, but they just got beat by 28. 28, that was the worst loss under Nick Saban that Alabama has had in his entire tenure. So I'm gonna put him at number two. Alabama's tremendous. Tua, Jerry Judy, one of the best wide receivers in the entire country, maybe the best wide receiver in the entire country. They're gonna have a great defense. They're gonna be right there. Their only competition in the SEC is Georgia. I think both of those teams might even get into the playoff, but I can't put them at number one. Why? Because Dabo Sweeney didn't leave, neither did any coach off of his staff. Trevor Lawrence didn't leave, Travis Etienne didn't leave. That team for Clemson is loaded and they throttled Alabama, throttled them by 28 points. I understand all their defense basically went to the NFL, but you earned yourself my preseason number one by winning the national championship last year, being the only team ever to finish 15 and 0 in the division one FBS level, being the only team to finish 15 and 0 in a college football season and having the best quarterback in the country. Clemson is my number one team.